Dollars, welcome back to our channel. This is Draw Chronicles. Today, I want to share with you something different from what I've been doing. To share with you my one year journey as a YouTuber. Last year, June, I decided to start this YouTube thing. You know, after consultation with some friends and family, I decided to put my energy into this. The funny thing is that up to today, I'm not fully prepared for the journey. But there are some lessons learned on this, you know, YouTube journey going to my monetization and more and i wish to share with everybody maybe this will inform somebody to also start the first thing is that youtube is difficult the journey youtube is difficult nobody should tell you it's easy if it is easy everybody will be doing it it's not like a normal facebook account you can just create but this journey is totally difficult and it involves a lot of commitment and consistency one of the things you know small creators suffer with mostly is finding a niche I will tell you today that it's better for you to find a niche. You need to decide on something. Are you going to talk about tech? Are you going to talk about real estate, agriculture? Are you going to talk about fashion? Are you going to talk about beauty? These are all key available niche for you. You need to research and based on your strength, you settle on one. You don't need to be floating. Your channel don't need to be roaming about today. You're talking about travel tomorrow. You're talking about this. At a stage, at the beginning stage as, as a small creator, if you don't get a niche and you master that, it's difficult for your channel to blow. I decided to do real estate. In this real estate, I was talking about land investing, purchasing and all of that. And in the real estate business, I found construction and houses. When you go to my channel now, you realize that videos on how sales or talking about construction are doing better than the educational videos. The ones that I shot on the grounds and there's a practical aspect to it, not the studio ones. They do much better than the one shot in the studio. In the same way, if you want to be a tech reviewer, you need to do yours in the studio. So it means that a studio one will be better for you. So it's one key thing. And another thing is that the YouTube itself needs to recognize your channel for a certain niche and then they will, you know, the algorithm will make sure that things about that industry or that niche will be coming to you. If you don't have a special niche and then you create videos around that, it's difficult for YouTube to share with you. There's something in the YouTube studio we call the inspiration. Inspiration talk about what people are searching for from your niche or what people are doing in your niche that gives value to them and there are a lot of you. So niche is one critical thing. And also there's something we call the RPMs. So that is the money aspect of it. Not every niche carries a huge RPM. So you need to carefully look for a niche that you can master. Because if you don't master and you love that niche, you'll not be able to continue. Now, one of the problems also is that at the beginning stage, we concentrate more on subscribers. I will tell you today that as a small creator, you need to concentrate more on retention. Retention is the number of times or the duration people spend on your channel or a given video. When people watch your video and they see value in the video, they are better off to become a subscriber than you chase the subscribers. That is why you see people started and then they are going to buy subscribers. You're going to buy robots as subscribers when it's time for monetization, you will not stand it. YouTube will delete your account, will not verify you because the people that are subscribers to the video are not real people. There is one thing in analytics of videos, one thing talks about returning viewers and new viewers. In analytics, YouTube will show the people that already subscribed to your channel and they are watching new videos from you. The same way, they will catalog the people that are new coming to you to come and watch new videos. Those are the two dynamics. So returning viewers and that of new viewers are coming to. So if you get robot following your account or you get people that just subscribe to your channel but they are not interested in what you do, you have the numbers but the views will be low. Therefore, when the views are low, then the algorithm will not favor you at the first place. So you need to invest into retention. That is the quality of work, researching getting the right people, making the right consultations. And then when you focus more on the retention, eventually the subscribers will come in. I've also been there. I've been thinking about, okay, get the subscribers. So when I meet somebody in town, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. But the person is not interested in real estate. The person doesn't know what the channel is doing. The person will not come back to your channel to check out for information that will benefit his or her life. Therefore, that subscriber is just there, is just a number. But the retention, we eventually make that person become a subscriber. Just in the business field, a loyal customer is somebody that has been attached to you, whether you are doing a bad video or not, but the person gained a value from you, so the person will be there. The most difficult aspect is consistency. I started with doing a video a week, got to a point I was doing two videos a week. 
Then sometimes I go three weeks, I don't do any video. Consistency is hard because you need to research and get the right topics that will move people. When you release your link out there, your friends will be able to watch it. Somebody will also watch it and be like, okay, this and that. So consistency is hard. Now the consistency, people who pay or applaud you for your consistency are basically not people in your circle. I can see people in my family, my siblings. Some of my siblings are yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel. But there are people out there that love my videos or are interested in whatever I do on my channel than people closer to me. The consistency bit, you need not to be thinking about only the people in your circle. You need to provide value for the people out there. And that is the most difficult aspect. If you are somebody that do things like I do, you need other people that need to work for you. Let's say you go to do a house tour. I need a cameraman. I need somebody that can edit the video. And it comes with cost. The same way if you are starting yourself, you need to master how to do video editing. How you be able to shoot. These are all key things that will prevent you not to be consistent. The financial aspect of it, the resources you need for the video shoots, and then researching experts, getting the right people to inform me are all critical things that may prevent you from being consistent. But the consistency is when the algorithm identifies you that your channel is doing well. On the normal day that I release no video and there is no traction ongoing on my channel, I'm able to get 300, 200 views. These are from old videos that people are coming to check. Therefore, consistency will allow your page or your channel to have a lot of videos that people will come in one in time in time to come and watch. It could be just a view today, two or four in 24 hours or 48 hours. But since that video is providing value to some people, they are sure to come back. So con consistency is key, but it's the most tedious aspect, especially if you don't have the resources and time. Let me tell you something. The time I shot my first video, I got a camera for my cousin and I rented the microphone. I got a tripod for one of my friends. We went, to, we went to the shoot. That day I scripted to come and, you know, talk about them, like how the newscasters do. But I'm not having a teleprompter. So when I go to the field, I need to be watching the screen and then working on the video also, or looking into the camera. And then I realize it's not working. It's so obvious that I'm reading. So what did I do? Right there, I decided to talk from my mind, like I'm doing now. Whatever I want to talk about is up from the head. And I begin to do. I fumble. When you watch my first video, I fumble. There are a lot of mistakes in there. I mix with the American English, with the, you know, the British English and all of that. There is problem with it. There is no smooth flow of the video, but I didn't stop because I was consistent. And the same night when I was going back after shoot, I need to get a place. Not then I had a studio like this to shoot. I went for a place. They asked me to pay for using the green garden for the video shoot. When we were returning back, we left the tripod in the car we picked. I need to chase that vehicle across town. If not that I identify the car, I will not be able to get a tripod back. The first time of shoot, I'm losing somebody's heavy duty tripod. And the same way the, the, the microphone I rented for the video wasn't well charged, so the sound was blasting. You can check it out. This is my first video and how crazy it is. But I continued on this journey. On the journey, I met people. Meeting people, there are people who show niceness to you, people who are dedicated to the cause, who just want to help you do the thing. They are not much concentrated on the money aspect because let's say you want to pay somebody, you cannot truly pay a photographer, a videographer, an editor for the money. So these are people that sacrifice their time for me. And I feel that exploring the circle and meeting the right people will help you to be consistent enough. Another thing they don't tell you about the YouTube journey is the SEO, search engine optimization. It's very critical. And you see, there are masters to this game. There are people who studied it and know how to go about it on YouTube, even on the web pages and on website or whatever to help your channel or your page to be indexed when they are searched. These are critical. And you need to learn it yourself. Unless, of course, you want to outsource somebody that will help with the journey. But the best thing is that when you try to understand the SEO team yourself, it helps you to generate ideas and how you'll be able to go about shooting your videos. It's critical. And when you check, Every now and then, our algorithm is talking about things. There are changes. That is why I even mentioned that you need to get a niche. With getting the right niche, you'll be able to understand what SEO strategy will work perfectly for your videos. How you title your video, the thumbnail for a video, the description for a video are all very critical. When you go to the YouTube studio, there is one thing that talks about the triple works. For example, you are using vidIQ. That matches the description with your title and make sure that it falls within the right 
you know, SEO or search words that people are going to search out there. Another critical thing is the tags. Even your, your channel tag and the video tag. You see people do nice videos, but because of SEO, the video will just be there. Nobody's coming to watch because nobody searches the video and get to see it. So you need to invest into how you get the right titles for your video, getting the thumbnail. I use Canva for my designs. I have my graphic designer that helps sometimes also. You need to learn it yourself. The titling, the description are all critical things. You need to invest your time into it. And then now you shoot the best of the videos and the video will never fly. Now, what did I do? What, I ha what happened is that people that are already in my niche are doing well. Nice videos. I went to their page. I studied the way they caption their titles. I studied the way they did their descriptions and I copied them. The tags they use for the video. They all help me to be able to place those tags and things on my video. So when somebody searches, there's a building in Ghana, they eventually get to see a video from me. Other than that, you'll be doing a video in your search, you know, your title, title, you don't include the keywords that people are searching. And people change the keywords over the course of time. What people used to search for house videos or issues on construction last year, it's likely that they are not going to use it this year. Therefore, you need to be constantly learning and going through your needs to get to see that okay these are the keywords people are using very critical if you beat the seo down it beats the channel also down you need to study it you need to master it and you need to inculcate that into your video delivery process other than that the best of the video will just be there nobody will watch it now i've seen people on a youtube journey spend six years two, three years two years to get monetized i did mine in seven months yeah i did mine in seven months I released my first video, I think 16th June last year. That is eight days after my birthday. And then I got monetized first week in December, seven months. That is how lucky I was. There are people that are out there, they got monetized within a month. People are doing it two years, three years, four years. That is why I spoke about the retention. And it was just two videos that got my channel to monetization. The YouTube is saying that you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And I told you earlier on that you can get a thousand subscribers, but you may not get the four thousand watch hours. It's the most difficult aspect of it. Four thousand watch hours is not is no joke. So when people are closing your video at the first twenty seconds, where when are you going to get one minute view to get an hour view to get thousand you know hours? So it's very critical. I did mine in seven months, and this is what I studied. Getting my niche, as I said earlier on, I was talking about land investment. I was talking about real estate in general. But I realized that people were much interested in my house tour videos and things I talk about, building of a house, construction and more. So those aspects gave me the much view. And on my channel, the people who watch the channel mostly are our friends and family in the diaspora. And that is the value I provided for them. People want to come back home and buy a house. People want to come back home and build their houses, but they don't get the right people because of the dishonesty in the industry. So people want to buy the house, they see that. And one key thing is that they need affordable houses. So people were looking for the video that I shot about the house sales and it's doing perfectly well. This video, you can see. It. And this video gave me, as it stands on, the video is about 3.9 K watch hours, heading to 4,000. Just a video giving you 4,000 watch hours. And that is all YouTube wanted. But the other videos are coming through. And then they eventually get there. I get the 4,000 watch hours, I got monetized. One thing I also realized that helped me was that if you dial or type my name, my channel's name, draw chronicles in the search button, you are likely to see it pop up below. Not every channel you get at once. You see it pop up below, you know, your search button. You see that it's below. Maybe draw will come somewhere, but draw chronicles. You are likely to get the first 20 things that will pop up downwards if you should not write the draw chronicles completely. And I invested a little bit into promoting the page and that I, that I feel helped the channel to some extent because it helped the algorithm register the presence of my channel. So when I shot the videos, I used the Google ads to promote the link across the country, in the US, in the UK. And you need to spend a good dollar on that also. And after that, I realized that people easily discover the channel than they used to because of the money I spent on it. Just like how you are doing the business, you need to invest into promoting that business. In your channel also, if you have the money, I would advise you to push it in there and then market it. Now, the first seven months that I got monetized, I think I got, let me check. I got a little bit about $20. 
And then after that, I got another money January, I got another money January. As I'm speaking now, I'm closer to $300. That is what I've garnered on my channel over the past, you know, from December to today that I gained on my channel. And then, eventually, all that ones will be coming into beat. Now, YouTube pays you money if your video go viral. Now, when the video go viral and you provide value to the people and the people spend a lot of time watching that video, which is their retention, YouTube then places a lot of videos to those people. So somebody can watch your channel for 10 minutes and the person sees six or the person can see four or five adverts placed on the channel. And that is how you make your money. That is why I said that you need to invest your time into retention. If you don't invest the time into retention and people don't spend time on the video, then it's only the beginning ads that they get to see. But when they are watching and they love the video, eventually they are going to be there and be seeing much from your channel. Now, I want to talk about the money I made. I made close to, let's say, $280 these few months that I've been on YouTube. It got to January, uh, March thereabout. The money declined because I didn't get any video that went viral or massively well. Even though I can say my video, the highest video on my channel is around 24K views, but I've met the time. Of, I met the watch hour threshold. So the first money I did in 2023 and I got monetized in December, I made 26.68 cents. That is what I made in 2023. And I got monetized first week in December. In this 2024, where January through to this side, I made $242. That is what I made. So in totality, I would say I made $269. But the past two videos, or past two days, money is here to be added to it. If that is added, I should get around $270 for the past few you know months so from december january you know up to this time is about six months that i got monetized that's the money i made now i spend money than this the money i spent to get this is more than that and i want to talk about that for you on the monetization journey when you provide value to people they get to contact you outside of youtube and you do things for them you get money for example my channel one of the challenges in our market is that getting the right artisans there are people who contacted my channel and then I got people for them because I'm a project officer for construction. So I gathered the people, the artisans and coach to come and work. People contacted me outside YouTube and then they pay me for the service, which is not part of the ad placement money. That is why you provide value to people. You get a lot of money outside of YouTube, even than this. And you see, there are sponsorship deal also. If you get the numbers and the views are there, organization can actually approach you to be able to place an ad on your channel. And one key thing also I want to add is that you need to grow your other social media account with a YouTube account because you convert people from other social media accounts, let's say Facebook, Instagram, Thread, X, and all of that to your YouTube channel. So if you focus only on building a YouTube and you don't build other external social media platforms, TikTok and co, you will not be able to move people from those grounds to the YouTube platform. So you need to grow all of them at once. And that comes with a tight, you know, brand work and consistency and video and all of that. And for example, TikTok, you need to shoot videos in portrait form. This I do a landscape form. The same way for YouTube shot, you need to be portrait. So it means that sometimes you can shoot the video, repurpose it into portrait form. Therefore, you need to grow all that social media account to be able to move people from those platforms to your YouTube channel. Now, one of the problems I face on this channel is AdSense. Nobody told me that. So after I got monetized, I need to add an AdSense account. I created it, linked that to my YouTube channel. Now, Google is supposed to send you a code to verify your AdSense address. That is why I did a mistake. I got, as you are watching this video now, I'm shooting this video on 9th June. I got my AdSense pin five days ago. When I started YouTube, I was not able to verify my address because the address I used first, they sent it but I didn't receive it. Now you need a PO box, especially when you're in Africa, you need a PO box address. And then YouTube will send you or Google will send you that code for you to verify your AdSense before you'll be able to cash out your money. On my YouTube channel, I've never cashed out any money. 
I just verified my address. Because the address I put into it first, in Ghana, for example, now one of the major addressing system we have now is the GPS, Ghana Post GPS app, where you generate codes in the Volta region, for example, we have VH, in Accra we have GR, GT and all of that. But that system is not actively working. We have a poor postal system. Therefore, you need to use a PO box number, an active box with the sense that when they send you that letter, you'll be able to receive and verify your code. I was at the verge of deleting my access account. If I should have done that, the money made over the course of time that I mentioned will be deleted because that, was, that money was associated with the account. But I was not able to verify. If you're not able to verify, you lose that money. And I've seen people do that. Therefore, you need to get a PO box number for the address to be sent to you. You put the code in to verify your access. And that's how can we be able to get your money. And also, you need a bank account. The bank account, you need to get a Swiss code, you need to add it so that the bank transfer can be done to you when, you know, eventually start earning money. Now, one thing people also do is that they focus so much on the AdSense. And I feel that when you focus only on the AdSense money as a YouTuber, you fail. Because there is so much money outside YouTube. The ad placement, that one is it's a peanut. You see the people like the MKBHD, you see the Mr. Beast and all of that. They have corporate sponsorship. M MKBHD, for example, is a tech reviewer. Apple gives him money. He, they pay him for his job. And that he will not get it from the YouTube video ads, ad placement. So them of them, if you go to their pages, you don't even see ad on it. Because the money they are making is beyond that. I know people who travel the world, they give highlights or market to your business. You need to pay $10,000, $20,000 before they feature your business into their YouTube channel. So you need to focus on building something for yourself that goes beyond the AdSense. AdSense is a peanut. If you don't go viral, you don't make huge money. You need to make the 100,000, you need to make the 1 million before you can get something concrete like the $5,000, the $10,000 from your YouTube channel. But when you have a value that people will pay you for. For example, me, if you need an artisan, you call out to me, I have the people that work. I bring my artisans to work. You need somebody for your house design. I have an architect. I connect to you. The architect work for you. I get a commission. You have a project. You need a project officer. I come to supervise. I coordinate. I see the budgeting. You know, I go to site to build your project for you. I make that money. That is beyond the YouTube. And if you have that mindset, you are sure to make a lot of money than the ad placement. And all boils down to providing value that nobody is giving. And it must be an you know, and much value you provide to people. And the final one is honesty. When you meet people outside of YouTube, you need to be honest to them. One of the problems I face on my channel is that I made an interview with somebody on my channel, I connected it to somebody, and then the person is not able to deliver on that. It masks the value of your channel or, or your brand. It goes on to dent your brand. Therefore, you need to be critical of the people who are third parties you involve into your YouTube journey. For example, me, I'm talking about this. If I want to get an architect, it should be an architect that is trustworthy and I'm sure that that person will provide a value to the client that watches the video. Other than that, the person will not deliver. They'll come back to comment on your channel and they, they tag your channel as spam. Just ask the good things about your channel is spreading online. Negative things about your channel can also spread around. This is what I experienced on my YouTube channel and this is like my first anniversary and this is what I have to share with you today. As a young beginner who also wants to start, I'm also at that stage, I'm still a beginner. You need to provide value to people, you need to be honest, you need to remain consistent, build a team of honest people and people who are ready to sacrifice for you because at this stage you need a lot of money to be able to do it. Thanks for being part of today's episode and if you find this helpful, we can connect as, you know, creators. Subscribe to my channel and more will come on Door Chronicles.